This one's going to shock you. A Chinese watch that's beautiful, affordable and original. I know, right? Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Shocking stuff, I know. What won't shock you though is that this watch is made by Seagull. China now has a near 70 year history of domestic watchmaking and Seagull have been at the forefront, at the vanguard of that since the very beginning. They are arguably therefore China's most recognised and recognisable watch brand and they make China's most recognised and recognisable watch, in my opinion anyway, the Seagull 1963. Or do they? I made this video a while ago as to what it is you actually get when you buy a Seagull 1963. I took it down when the channel got deleted because it said fake in the title and I got a bit paranoid, but I put it back up today. I'll leave a link up there and I'll leave a link at the end of this video. Well worth watching, I promise you. The watch on my wrist today, the one that I'm going to review, is a Wu Yi 51. Just because it's a 51 doesn't mean to say though that this stems from 1951. They actually made them between the late 1950s and the early 1970s in the Changjin factory that is now Seagull. You saw the pop-up, I'm sure. This video is sponsored by the Seagull official store on AliExpress. They got in touch with me in July, asked me if I'd be interested in reviewing this one, and I said, yes, please, it's gorgeous. However, they have adjusted the price considerably since then, shall we say. It's still beautiful, but it's not quite as affordable as it was when I agreed to the review. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. And there they are, two gorgeous retro reissues by Seagull. Or at least the one on the right is definitely by Seagull. The one on the left, well, you're going to have to watch my video to find out. I reckon this Wu Yi is one of the most attractive little watches I have seen in ages. Certainly the prettiest watch to come out of China. I reckon it is prettier than the Seagull 1963 on the left. I mean, just look at that thing. That would melt the heart of every retro watch lover, I'm sure. Mid-century perfection. I love those Dauphine hands, the Arabic at 12. I love that champagne sunburst style, one of the most attractive sunburst style I have come across on any watch at any price. The little dots of loom just beyond those slender arrowhead indices. I think the dial is just about perfect. Now, the logo above the index at six there. I said 51, it's actually 5-1. Yes, yeah, so it definitely doesn't pertain to 1951. That would actually have meant that it preceded the Chinese watch industry by four years. The Changjin Watch Factory, which went on to become Seagull, only opened in 1955. This Wu Yi 5-1 pertains to their second watch, which they made from 1957 to 1971. Well, that actually pertains to the 1st of May, which is their annual Labor Day holiday when the proletariat gather to celebrate the joys of a day's hard work. Yeah, right. It's now one of the biggest public holidays in China. I believe everybody gets five days off. Now, the watch I've got is not Seagull's first attempt at a Wu Yi 51 reissue. They actually launched this one back in 2013. Similar case, similar specs, similar movement, but very different price. I think their new one is prettier though. What do you think? Here's a big image of the 2013 version reissue on screen. I will circle back to this watch later on when I talk about price though. Okay, so let's get into the box then. Now, being a C-Gull from the C-Gull official store, that means you get nice packaging, that means you get a full two-year warranty, and that means that each watch comes with a QR code on the case back from the factory. That proves it's original, that proves it's authentic. You can scan that in, I believe, register the watch, and they do an extended warranty on that basis as well. This one is available on a choice of two straps. There's a kind of plain black leather, which I'm sure is more authentic, more authentic to the 50s and 60s, but I much, much prefer this kind of paler, honey-coloured, cross-stitched vintage style, much more comfortable on wrist as well. And there it is, that gorgeous sunburst dial glinting around in my studio lights, going from silver to champagne to gold and then back again, depending on the angle. Now, mid-century styling with mid-century sizing. I measure this one at 37 millimeters in diameter with a 10.7 millimeter thickness, super compact 44 mil lug to lug. Now that is gonna open it up to even the smallest of wrists. And I reckon this one has unisex appeal as a consequence. It does, however, have 20 millimeter lug width and on the supplied 
cross-stitched honey-colored strap. This one weighs in at 50 grams, so really compact and very, very light and wearable. I'm guessing 316L stainless steel. It says stainless steel in the listing. I will obviously leave a link to this one in the description of the video. I'm guessing also that's a three-piece case with a fixed stainless steel bezel. We've got a screw-on case back, although not any tool that I have in the house, so you're not going to readily access that one. You're not going to be able to take the case back off and adjust this movement should it be required. It is a push-pull crown, and as you can see there, only 30 meters of water resistance. That will be appearing in the moans and niggles section. 50, I think, would have been preferable. Very, very simple case finish on this one. High polish throughout. It's a retro reissue, and I'm guessing, therefore, that the original Wu Yi 5-1 watches from the 50s, 60s, and early 70s would have had this high polish finish throughout. It does have a signed crown. Printed on there is that 5-1 Wu Yi logo that also features on the dial and on the case back. And covering the dial today is a piece of double domed sapphire. It's a lovely piece of glass. You don't actually get any distortion almost just a little bit at the very, very edge there, but a lovely piece of glass for sure. The strap is soft and comfortable, not much more I can say about it. The cross-stitching is reasonable. It's unbranded, but at least they do have a, a Seagull-branded high-polished silver buckle and tang to match the case. The case back we've now seen a couple of times already, so I'm not going to dwell on it. Suffice to say that it's stainless steel, it's nicely done, but it is high polish, meaning it is going to pick up scuffs and scratches readily. What's behind the case back? Well, it's a Seagull. Indeed, it's a Seagull ST2130. Now that is Seagull's clone of the ETA2824. I know what you're thinking, Chinese watch clone, it's a fake. Well, no, it's not a fake. In this instance, clone just means copy. There's no patent anymore on the ETA2824 and Seagull are one of a number. I think there are about half a dozen companies, including Salita, STP, etc., etc., that copy that movement design and make their own version of it. 25 joule hacking and hand winding auto running at 28,800 vibrations per hour. I would be impressed with this one. That is a crack in daily variance of plus one second, healthy amplitude, but the beat error is a little higher than I would have hoped for from a relatively fresh movement. But let's put the movement to one side for now and get back to looking at that gorgeous dial and handset. It really, really is a stunner. So the C hyphen gull logo is printed on beneath that Arabic at 12. Everything else is applied, including that 5-1 logo above the index at 6. I love those really slender arrowhead battens pointing into the pinion. Date complication at the 3 o'clock with a beveled edge frame. There's a printed minute track all the way around the outside. And China made. I haven't seen that on the dial of a watch before. I think it's nice to see a watch or anything else that's made in China where you can actually take pride in the fact that it is Chinese made because it is a Chinese original design. Gorgeous, gorgeous handset, gold-toned, beveled down the middle, Dauphine with a really slim needle second hand. Now, there is a little bit of loom on the two hour and minute hand and little drops of loom beyond those arrowhead batons. I will show you the loom a little later on. It really is a lovely sunburst effect and it looks great close up this one. No specks of dust and the hands are really well finished. No rough edges whatsoever. The whole thing looks super sharp. And it looks good on wrist as well. I think I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. Yeah, look how dynamic that dial is indoors, going from kind of pale champagne to deep gold on certain angles. Now, 37 is not super small. It's not like wearing a 34. It's a different proposition altogether. If you own a Seagull 1963, that one's about 38, or at least 38 is the smallest of the sizes it's now available in. It wears very similarly, although it is a little bit slimmer. Yet, yeah, super comfy strap on this one. That buckle's not all that amazing, but it does go with the, the finish on the head of the watch. Overhead legibility, yeah, well, uh, not in this lighting anyway. Gold hands against a champagne dial, perhaps not super legible. The little strips of loom down the middle do help, and the white date, I guess, is legible from arm's length, at least. Outside, in a little bit of Sydney sunshine today, you can see just how dynamic that gorgeous dial is. You can also see a little bit of sun flare occasionally from the high polish case. I think the two of them bouncing off each other beautifully 
On wrist, yeah, super compact, nice and light, and 20 millimeter lug width. Chances are you're gonna have a bunch of 20 mil straps lying around the house. This one is more than slim enough to take one piece NATOs, I reckon, sort of vintage, that distressed leather NATO would look really, really good with this one, but I'm sure you've got plenty in your collection just waiting for a watch like this. So gorgeous it may be, but what are my moans and niggles today? Well, I'm sure you probably noticed, I reckon the date sits a little high in the date frame in this particular model. Not a massive deal breaker, I won't be returning this one, but yeah, just something to note. And I haven't shown you the Loom video yet, and that's a sure sign that the Loom is gonna be rubbish, and indeed the Loom is rubbish. Looks okay initially, you get those little dots around the outer edges in the minute track, and you do get a reasonable length of Loom on each of the hour and minute hands. But when I turn the speed up, by about the three minute mark, those hands have buggered off entirely and they are joined at the five minute mark by all of those indices, the loom is useless. And then there's the price. If I don't tell you the price up front, it's probably because it is also going to feature in the moans and niggles section. The price of this watch is over 400 US dollars. Now there is a voucher there at the moment taking it down to 378, but that is still a fair chunk of money. You get a lot of looks for your money, but you don't get an awful lot of specs for your money, especially when you can get the Wu Yi 51 previous reissue for about half of that price. Now I reckon that is the same case, the same movement and the same sapphire crystal for under $200. So as pretty as this watch is, I reckon they're gonna have to do something about that price if they want to attract sales. I'm sure it was far closer to 300 when I spoke to them about this one in July. 400 US dollars is perilously close to the Hamilton Intramatic. Again, a 38 millimeter watch with a genuine ETA 2892 movement in the back rather than a Seagull clone of the 2824. In fact, I'm not quite sure what the C-Gull shop are doing in terms of their pricing. The genuine article Seagull 1963 used to be $399 and here they are charging over 600 bucks for it. Perhaps they got tired of selling watches and just cranked up their prices as a consequence. So a gorgeous little watch then and definitely a watch that I recommend, but I also recommend maybe coming back to this one at some point in the future having a look at the listing when there's a sale on. Let's be honest, they have a sale on at Ali fairly regularly. $300, I reckon this one makes a pretty strong case for itself. When it's $400, I don't think that case is quite as strong. So there you have it, well done for making it to the end of the video. You're clearly a fan of Seagull. If that is the case, why don't you watch that 15 minute investigation about the history behind the Seagull 1963 or a double unboxing I made earlier this year with not one, but two Seagulls. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.